The show focused on delivering beneficial information on everything to do with products and services that can improve your life. This is Experts on Call on AM650. Welcome back to the program. Our guests in studio, Sean Lang, president of Interprovincial Roof Consultants, and Ivan von Spronson, executive director of the Roofing Contractors Association of BC, as we talk everything roofing in the, this program. Uh, Ivan, we were talking, uh, you uh, actually, Sean, mentioned a very odd stat just before we went to break. You said in British Columbia, province-wide, there are approximately 1,200, for round numbers, mm -hmm. roofing companies yeah. of one degree or another, of which 66 are members of the Roofing Contractors Association of BC. So to the Contractors Association Executive Director, Ivan, that's a, that's some some wild math. What what about the ele other 1133 roofing companies? What's the deal why the, why aren't they uh, members of the association? Well, it's a good question and certainly one that we hear uh, a lot. Uh, first of all, I would say that, uh, just for perspective, that the percentage of, of, of industrial, commercial, institutional work, which is the largest portion of the work that our members do, that is performed by our members, uh, is, is a very high percentage of, of that work uh, in the province. Uh, perhaps as much as 70% of that work would be done you know, by our members. So they, ah. a lot of them is because they are very large firms. Mm -hmm. Some of them are, but they aren't all. We also have, uh, we've got firms that are really quite uh, small family uh, family firms around the province. And the RCABC has members in, in every region uh, of the province and uh, virtually every, every city. So it's not as if we haven't got the coverage that we need. Mm -hmm. But and to, to your point of, of, of why some of these members, uh, some of the, the non-members uh, haven't uh, you know, joined the association, I mean, uh, certainly that's something that they would have to talk about. It is, it is, a, a, it is a difficult designation to achieve. Um, we, we certainly... So they don't just send you a check in the mail and you, you mail them a card no, and they're they, in. they have to qualify. So there is, you don't, it's a different kind of joining then, that, right? You have to actually deserve to be a member. Well, and, and I think really what you have to do is you have to demonstrate a lot of a lot of things in order to be uh, in order to become uh, be considered for membership in okay. the RCABC, and and that has to do with uh, financial stability. It has to do with your uh, risk management practices, your 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 safety uh, practices. It has to do with your training of your personnel um, that they've got that training in place. Uh, you have to uh, th there's th there's a, a lot of of, of uh, expectations around uh, business ethics, which admittedly are are those are important uh, important part of, of, of the the process mm -hmm. and and it's the ongoing uh, you know performance and it's one of the things that we uh, certainly in, in RCBC it's important to us is that uh, it, there has to be ongoing um, uh, adherence to those standards. So just because you're a member of RCABC and you've you've made it uh, in, into into the association doesn't mean that you're now excluded from having to maintain those standards. So, so it, it is possible then that some companies have applied for membership and have been denied. Um, that is correct. I mean, certainly, I, I think when people uh, you know uh, have applied, they and they understand what the qualifications and requirements are. Mm -hmm. um, they're owners, and and um, so some people the vast the majority of inquiries won't even end up being applications and we don't hear from them again. Mm. And I, I, I'm not going to speak to that and it's not as if every contractor who isn't an RCABC member is a terrible contractor. No, no, they no, may no, have other, other different reasons sure. that, they, that they may choose to not be involved. But I will say that it is a uh, it, the process is is rigorous and it's conservative and you know we certainly um, you know if you're going to hold yourself up as being um, you know high level contractors and the, and the best of the best then you have to have standards and you have to apply them. Right, well, and as... This is why we like to use RCABC members as much as we can in right. our tendering processes mm -hmm. because it's kind of a way to uh, weed out contractors that may cause a lot of headaches on a job. And for us, even though a contractor may be an RCABC member, that doesn't necessarily... We fine-tune it even further. Right. Um, we have our own list of contractors of RCABC members that we like to use because... Some RCABC members may not be doing things the way we want to see them done, mm -hmm. or they may not cooperate with us the way we like them to, so we don't use them on our tendering processes. So even though they're members, that doesn't necessarily mean they're up to the IPRC standards that we want to see. But we do use the RCABC members as much as we can uh, versus any outside members because we know they've been through the strict um, application process mm -hmm. and approval process and that they have to maintain that level of integrity and ethics in order to maintain their, their uh, position as a member. Uh, let's, uh, let's just take a second and, and expand on, on this because 
Let's talk about what Interprovincial Roof Consultants does for a couple of minutes here, Mr. Lang. Sure. <laughs> because you uh, represent the, in a case of maybe a, a commercial building, you would represent the owners or yeah. possibly the landlord. In the case of a strata environment, you would represent the owners or the strata yeah. council, perhaps. And in the case of an individual house in the burbs, you're, uh, you're probably going to go to bat for the owner. And yeah. what you do is assemble the whole process yeah. of, of getting that roof either fixed or redone, or in the case of a brand new building, installed in the first place. Well, we're basically gli guides through the the whole process. Right. It's the best way to describe it. Well, we're acting for the owners or, or whoever hires us. It's usually the owners. Um, and, and on their behalf, we will look at the system or the building that they've got and determine what the needs are. And we'll report those needs back to the owner. And depending on what those needs are and the actions that the owner want to undertake from that point, we go forward with either writing a specification for replacement or repair. And then we tender it out to roofing contractors who we feel are capable and, and, and properly suited to do the work that we're asking of them. And each contractor receives precisely the same set of specifications yes. so that everyone is bidding on the same page Absolutely. and for the same project. Yeah, there's nothing worse than having to compare one contractor's uh, independent proposal on how he's going to repair, uh, repair or replace a roof system versus another contractor. So you might have one contractor who has 100 workers, all the equipment in the world that you can think of, right. and then you got Johnny and his brother with a pickup truck and a hammer that are going to put on a roof, and Johnny's price is way less right. than the other guy's. But there's many different factors that will cause those prices to be so different, and the outcome of the project will be so different depending on which way you go with it. And that's where we fall into place is that we're going to guide the owners of the building on their choices where they want to go, depending on what they want to do as mm -hmm. far as bu uh, budget, spending, uh, end goal. Are they going to keep the building forever? What's the plan here? Right. So we basically go over all this and have discussions before any action takes place, before any work gets Find underway. out what you really want to do and yeah. then establish the project. Yeah, and, and it, being proactive is the main thing. Right. If a person is reactive when it comes to construction, you're going to end up paying a lot of money and you're going to go through a lot of headache. It can, it, it can get very expensive as it is. I mean, some projects run into the millions of dollars. Uh, easily into the hundreds of thousands of dollars, depending on the building. Sure. So you're not talking about a couple of dollars in the in the, your back pocket that you might throw out there. These are significant expenditures, mm -hmm. and you want to make sure that you're positioning every aspect of it in the right way. The right contractor, the right specification being done under the right conditions, the right spec written for the building that it's the roofing is being applied on, right. with the right components that are going to make the building and the roof system work together well. All these factors come into play. Somebody has to guide you through that, and if you're just a building owner who is a professional in your own field, whatever it may be, lawyer, businessman, you're not necessarily a roofing professional. All right. And that's where we come in. Because right. that's all we do. Mm -hmm. IPRC.ca to find out more about uh, Sean's company and the kind of work that they could do for you. Uh, back to you for a second, Ivan von Spronson. Uh, uh, you mentioned a couple of things about the mandate of uh, the uh, Roofing Contractors Association. You talked about business as ethical standards, and we'll talk about warranties in a little bit. But you also talked about safety. Mm -hmm. So I would imagine province-wide, there is a safe way to do roofing and a not-so-safe way. And anyone who takes your courses out there in Langley understands completely the safe way. Yeah, for sure. I mean, and, and uh, we have worked very closely over many years with WorkSafe BC in, in, in terms of... of you know, uh, helping develop the standards and also developing the protocols around how the standards are, are implemented. Okay. And and that safety training is a, is an ongoing process. I mean, it's it's the kind of thing that happens in 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 every level of their apprenticeship training, but even far beyond that, we 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 hold uh, safety and fall protection uh, courses on a regular basis for people inside and outside of the Association of BC. Okay. And I think it's an important thing to mention too with our with our technical training. So with the apprenticeship pr uh, training that we do. As that's not exclusive to our CBC members, that any any person can come in. And, and the interesting thing about our apprenticeship is that there's very little cost, almost no cost involved uh, to the apprentice to come to school. Mm. Um, you know, he's going to have to take time off work, and although he can often get uh, some EI support in, in order, order to do that, but there's many schools in which you want to become an apprentice where you have to pay a significant amount of tuition in order to do that, and that's not the case. And whether or not you're, uh, you know, happen to be a, a, an RCBC uh, member uh, co contractor or 
or an employee of same um, you can still come to school in our place and the idea is you know we believe that trained workers are good for everybody and and in for our industry and and bringing them in and we frankly also believe that when people uh, come in and get those skills and get that training that they're going to want to work for an RCABC member at some point anyhow so well that makes sense uh, in, in, uh, just a, a straight homeowners question here and of course we could apply it in a commercial and a strata context as well but I'm the homeowner. It's my house. Two guys in a pickup truck want to want to redo my roof. Mm-hmm. One of them falls off my roof in mm-hmm. the process of the job being done. Am I the homeowner in any way liable legally for what uh, what has just happened here, or did they? Does a roofer assume all of that risk the second they go up the ladder? That's a very good question, and certainly something we we, we face a lot, and and it's and a very legitimate concern. Uh, the, the short answer is, if they are covered by by uh, WCB or, or WorkSafe BC, uh, um, if they're registered with them and and current and and uh, you know currently uh, up to date, and and so the coverage is in place. Uh, as as a homeowner, your your risks are are minimized. Okay. Uh, the contractor is going to bear the responsibility for that. And the okay. So they're a little is, less than a hundred percent on the money, and they don't have their current. There, there fees is there is up. an important distinction though. Yeah. If if you're a homeowner or a building owner and you're doing uh, renovations and you are acting as the general contractor mm-hmm. and you are the owner and you bring in a roofing contractor to do the work and that roofing contractor is not covered independently by workers' compensation, you are acting as the prime consultant, the prime uh, contractor, contractor on that on that project, and you are taking responsibility for the actions of all subtrades. So if you are re- renovating your building and you call in Johnny with his pickup truck right. to put the roof on and Johnny has no real company and no real coverage, you're liable at that point. Okay. So the difference being that if you hire a roofing contractor who is, has got his WorkSafe BC registration in and everything, he's all right. up to date on everything, you now are covered, he's covered independently of you. Right. Right. So that's an important distinction to make. And that's an important question. You keep doing this to us, Sean. You keep giving us great questions to ask. I'm so sorry. Well, you shouldn't be because it's your <laughs> job and it's your company. But seriously, Ivan, mm-hmm. I mean, another fair ball question for a consumer with well, some roofing guy on his doorstep uh, with the brochure. And here's my business card. And I hear you're looking for a little improvement here. And geez, we'd love to help you out. Well, are you currently up to date with all your WBCB payments? That's a fair ball question because if you're not, I'm on the hook. That's fair ball, isn't it? And the thing is, I would venture to say that 95% would say that, but it's really easy to prove that, especially nowadays. There was a time where you'd have to send a self-addressed envelope in order to get that uh, confirmed. But nowadays, uh, if if you request a copy that the person has clearance from WorkSafe BC, it's an online thing that the contractor can go can go online and literally download something that says, as of this day, today, uh, this person is covered by WorkSafe BC. Company. And Sean, you're on people's doorsteps all the time. You know the drill here. I mean, this is so critical and how many homeowners or people who are in a position to hire roofers whether they're a building manager in a strata building or whatever how many ask that incredibly basic question well i'm sure that if you're doing that on a regular basis you're a facilities manager you might get conditioned to ask those questions i suppose if right? you got a million dollar yeah, roof job it's, to it's deal the with individual you want to make sure your people are covered yeah it's the individual building owner who may not know to ask those questions right. but these are things that are covered in our specifications regardless mm-hmm. so th- again that sort of differentiates a specification that's properly prepared by a consulting firm versus the one that a roofing contractor provides you with. Right, right. uh, Where we outline the requirements, and one of them is that they must be currently uh, up to date with all their WorkSafe BC. That was my point entirely. If you were to retain the services of a consultant right from the get-go, you would avoid some of these well-known pitfalls mm-hmm. because you didn't know the right questions to ask. The consultant sure does. Exactly. And he will uh, inform you uh, that if you didn't ask about the safety, then allow me, or, or because that's what you do. It's mm-hmm. about Well, I think it's even beyond that. I think you, you, in, in, in a tender package that you'll get from a, from, from a good consultant, um, when you're submitting your tender, you actually have to have proof of... Some kind of uh, case number, a file number. Absolutely. Right, right. Yeah, that, that you have the coverage. You have to have proof that you've got uh, the liability insurance. Also, liability insurance that's uh, enough liability insurance, but also one that's appropriate to the to the application. There are some types of liability insurance, which, yeah, I'm a roofer with liability insurance, but I may 
may not have coverage for specific applications yeah, because hot, some applic hot work. Hot work uh, application okay. is a specific uh, an endorsement, and uh, frankly, a lot of uh, insurance companies don't include that endorsement. You have to pay, uh, and you have to. It's it's a specific uh, requirements around that coverage. So those are questions that absolutely you should ask, and that you can guarantee that uh, that a, a, a good roof consultant is going to ask those questions. Now, Ivan, you're the executive director, and the Roofing Contractors Association of British Columbia provides a lot of services to British Columbians province wide. Mm -hmm. I wonder though, how many people just kind of do a little bit of a Google search and go, ah, I'll call those people mm -hmm. and just, just call you out of the blue and go, so, you know any good roofers? <laughs> does that happen? Yeah, <clears throat> absolutely it does. It's uh, it's the kind of thing that we, uh, on a daily basis, our technical people will take those kind of calls, and we and we love to do so. It, it's not a problem. We always want to steer people towards uh, good contractors and good consultants. But we will say, uh, usually early on in every conversation, that uh, you know that we we have a list of members on our website. Obviously, that's what we do, and but we also have a list of what we call accepted inspectors. I think one thing I, I, it, we haven't really talked about, but I think it's really important. So this is about our relationship with our inspection community. The inspectors are a crucial part of what we uh, what we do at RCABC. They their their input in in terms of technical understanding, in terms of of. Uh uh, helping us uh, develop our standards, uh, mm -hmm. we we haven't spent a bunch of time on that, but you know our our the, the RCBC roofing standards are the de facto roofing standards for British Columbia. But even beyond that, uh, they're looked at uh, Canada wide as being the leading um, um, standards in in Canada, and that w is pretty much inarguable. I, I think any in any any province in BC. And Sean, you're on the technical committee for yes, the I association, am. aren't you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and so the, the technical committee, uh, you know, we've 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 called them the Dragons Den at times. You know. Mm -hmm. There, there's uh, uh, over 20 uh, people involved there uh, with varying backgrounds, but all of them are essentially roofing professionals um, and, and roofing consultant uh, and, and, uh, and, and building envelope uh, folks that have you know, real in-the-trench experience with this. And any product, any system, any detail change, any standard development, all that stuff is all vetted through this group and, 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 and really uh, taken apart. So before we bring something into our standards, into our accepted standards, uh, it's got to run that uh, run through that gamut. The gauntlet, huh? The, the gauntlet, yeah. and it's not an easy thing to do. Well, it's uh, it sounds pretty tough, and sh uh, judging by the, s the smile on Sean's face, it it's a pretty tough go, and, and you kind be. of enjoy putting these people through, because if you're going to if you're gonna put a product on the marketplace with your stamp of approval on it, mm -hmm. it's got to well, be a good, legit product, I've right? said it many times, I don't want to use my clients as guinea pigs, mm -hmm. so I expect that when a, a new product is brought through the RCABC, and it's actually going to get accepted into the program and become one of the products that I'm going to specify, I want to make sure that that product is going to perform so that, that my clients aren't paying the price down the road of that product failing prematurely. Right. We're talking roofing on Experts on Call here on AM650. Our guest in studio, the executive director of the Roofing Contractors Association of BC, Ivan von Spronson, is with us, along with Sean Lang, president of Interprovincial Roof Consultants. And we're back with more right after this. <laughs> Delivering relevant and beneficial consumer information. This is Experts on Call. And there's more still ahead on AM 650.